Hey folks, how you doing? Looks like uh, we're gonna get started here in just a second with uh, a brand new uh, stream for you. Happy New Year to each and every one of you. My name's Keith Allen from Material Indicators. Today, we are going to climb in uh, to some of our tools and do some low time frame and high time frame analysis of Bitcoin and ETH. And uh, maybe if we have time, we'll, we'll, we'll check out a couple of other alts, but um, really obviously a lot of dramatic movement in the market here this week. Um, you know, possibly the catalyst was uh, was the hawkish uh, tone of the Fed minutes the other day. Uh, it's it's obviously impacted um, uh, legacy, you know, traditional markets as well. And uh, you know, we, we kind of see a correlation here. So so we're going to climb in, uh, utilize some of our tools, and and see if we can uh, make sense of oh, what's going on here. Before we do that, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, all of our new members and subscribers. Uh, in our Telegram channel, on our Twitter channel, and uh, and of course our our premium VIP channel. A lot of new members joined us uh, over the holidays. We we're very appreciative. We appreciate the support. Um, hope you are figuring out the tools. And uh, today, uh, as we do this analysis, I'm going to show you um, some of the nuances of some of these tools to help you um, get a better understanding of how you might use them uh, to your advantage. Uh, as we as we go. If you're not yet a member of our community uh, of global traders, I invite you to join us uh, on Telegram and Twitter, of course, but uh, Telegram is really where it happens. Uh, here's the link right here. If you can't uh, copy that down, then uh, you, know, you can get it off of uh, our profile um, in uh, Twitter. Of course, if you like the content that we share here, I hope that you will um, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, before we get started, I, I definitely, you know, got to touch on the fact that uh, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Material Indicators does not uh, provide financial advice of any way, shape or form. Trading is risky. Please never, ever, ever risk more than you can afford to lose. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump into it. And, you know, when we're done, I'll, I'll give you a run through and show you where you can find some of these tools uh, on our website at materialindicators.com, which incidentally um, is getting a facelift. So first and foremost, let's just climb in and see what uh, our uh, chart is looking like right now. So let me go to a... Um, to a shared screen and pull up a Bitcoin chart and we'll, we'll, we'll start there and then we'll, we'll, we'll just kind of progress through all of this the best that we can. Uh, here we go. Oh, there's uh, our options flow chart. We'll get to that. Uh, and that's in the new MI dashboard, by the way, we'll get to that uh, throughout the analysis here. But the first thing I want to show you is uh, just straight up uh, Bitcoin chart. Um, let me just expand this chart first and, and explain the structure that that we seem to have lost. And I'll even clean it up and and take out the um, take out the trend precognition signals here for just a moment, and we'll we'll climb back into those here. Um, so you know, with any tools that you're using, I think it's really important um, to take everything in context and validate with other with other things. Okay, and so this is the market structure that I've been been looking at. Um, we've been in, uh, you know, a bit of, uh, you know, this, this turned out to be kind of a distribution phase here. Obviously we dumped, this is when we were up around, you know, 65,000, uh, we dumped, um, we tested this support here on this trend line, which, uh, basically comes from, from where we, where we broke out from 20,000 and this is our, um, trend line from the all time high here range where we seem to be in another distribution phase. So this, this literally came to a head on December 31st, January 1st. Um, and I extended the structure here cause I, I'd really at the time didn't have time to, to see what was going on, but just kind of extended the structure and was watching it here for a few days. And of course we, we recently uh, broke through the structure and started revisiting these 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 boxes here. These ranges are uh, areas of prior uh, consolidation that um, that seem to be significant. Either prior consolidation consolidation or prior uh, resistance and support flips that uh, that seem significant. And as you can see, uh, we're actually testing those structures um, 
as we speak. Um, where do we go from here? Well, if this one doesn't hold, then chances are, um, you know, we're taking a, a, a further dip. Um, and I'll explain what some of those might be here uh, in, in a moment. Uh, this purple line here is the 200-day moving average, and it's one that I, I, I follow pretty closely. Um, in fact, let me turn on a couple of them so we can see how the moving averages um, kind of came into play, not just uh, on this trend, but on the prior uh, loss of loss of structure. Okay, this was our first um, run to the new all-time high after we broke 20K, and we made it all the way up to 65 grand, okay? What many of us noticed, um, and, and admittedly, I... I, I drank the Kool-Aid on the narrative, and I was um, foolishly not really following some of my my typical rules, which will not happen again, by the way. But you know, we lost uh, at this point. We had we had lost the 50-day moving average. We lost the 100-day moving average. We lost the 200-day moving average, and that really was um, uh, some key technical levels that. I, I always like to respect this 200-day moving average. Just historically, it's it's really um, been kind of a make or break thing for, for the Bitcoin trend. Um, secondary to that, maybe not secondary, but kind of a final validation next to that or confirmation would be the 21 uh, weekly moving average. And if I can get that to show up on my chart, let's see where we are. I'm probably way out of whack. Okay. So uh, looking at that same at that same time frame, we had also lost the 21 and and that was that was really the last the last straw. So here we are again. We lost the 21 uh, weeks ago. It's, it's hidden right there. Let me move this out and we can see where that is. We lost the 21 um, at the end of November and we retested it. We retested it week after week we retested it. And up until um, uh, really this week, we were wedged between the 200-day moving average um, and the and the 20. Actually, we were wedged between the trend because we had lost the 200-day moving average. We were wedged between this trend line and um, trying to reclaim the 200-day moving average, and 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 the ceiling seemed to be the 20, or I like to use the 21-week. Uh, moving average, which still is kind of a nemesis for us right now. So now I want to introduce uh, some other tools that may help um, you understand uh, what the trend is doing and give you clues in the future of 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 what what you can be looking for. And I'm going to start here with our trend precognition um, algo. And this, the arrows here, is the A2 plus uh, algo. It is a bit of a lagging indicator in that. Um, signals don't print, uh, and this is a, this is a limitation of trading view. Signals don't print until the uh, adjacent candle prints. So this signal flashed and it was here, but it didn't actually print until this candle closed. Now, in this instance, that left us, um, enough time to still capitalize, uh, on that signal. So here we go with another move. This signal has not printed just yet. This signal will not print until this candle closes. However, you know, this move has already, you know, already been validated. Um, by the time this candle closes, will this have already bounced? Well, that, that remains to be seen, but let's take it a little bit further. And this, this, this um, algo really excels on daily, you know, anything above daily, right? is the default. Now you can use it on intraday, but for what we're doing, um, we're going to look at, um, if you're going to use it on intraday, you need to adjust the settings and that's, that's available in another video. Um, today we're, we're, we're looking, um, at the moment anyways, daily, you see, we, we lost it here and, and, and we lost it just before the trend, uh, just before we lost the trend line. And, um, perhaps more importantly, uh, we did print um, a short on the monthly. When we close December, we got a print here at the all-time high that um, this is indeed signaling uh, a downtrend. So 
how can you tell the strength of these signals? Well, there's two telltale signs. The length of the arrow, the length of the tail, uh, determines the strength of the signal or indicates the strength of the signal, I should say. That doesn't necessarily mean uh, the move is going to be bigger than this move. It just means that the probability of this signal being accurate are higher. Um, another place we can see that, and I'm going to now go back to my other screen, um, uh, right down here. This is also the A2 plus algo, and this is, so this is the on-chart version up here. This is off-chart, and you can see here um, where where the signals are, and if we put our, um, our, our indicator data on, we can see uh, this, is a, this is a very high uh, probability, 81.27%, uh, as you see those values over here. Um, so that's a very solid signal. Now, let's look at this uh, indicator right here. This is also trend precognition, and this is um, the A1 algo. And the difference between the A1 and the A2 is the A1 is more of a predictive indicator. And the reason why is this uh, line that I have yellow right now, um, the fault is, is a different, is actually black, I think, but um, on a dark chart, I like the contrast. So uh, I changed the color and you can learn how to customize those in another video you can see on our channel. Um, green dots signal the long, red dots signal short, and when we have confluence between an A1 and an A2 signal, that's when they really seem to be uh, their strongest. Now, this, the, the, the predictive part that I, I talked, that I mentioned is this slope line here. If I went to a, um, and it's going to throw, I'll turn this off for the moment because it's going to throw a, a zillion signals. Um, but if I went to a, um, shorter time frame, you could see this, and I'll, let me expand it and make it easier to see. You can see this line actually uh, start to move. Now it's indicating right now that, uh, and there you just saw it tick a little bit. It's indicating right now that we're trending up. Now this is very micro. I'm looking at a, at a one minute chart here, okay? It's indicating that we're trending up on, in, in this particular instance. It won't paint a signal until it crosses this midline in either direction, right? So we can use this in, in any time frame. Let's look at it in 15 minutes. So the one minute said we're going up, the 15 says we're going down, and you, you see where it printed a signal when it crossed this midline right here. Um, one hour. The one hour says we're going up, it printed a, you know. So again, this would be something that that scalpers and, and uh, um, uh, range traders might be might be looking at, um, but if you're if you're in this for the long term, this is this is obviously rather rather micro. But when you're trying to make a decision of whether you want to pull the trigger on on a, on a trade, whether it's a DCA, uh, whether you're opening a position, um, this is the, this can be a helpful tool to help validate your moves. Four hour looks like it's trending upward. Um, daily, however, trending downward still. Weekly, trending downward still. Monthly, trending downward still. And this is active, live, real time. This thing moves, so it could change, uh, change course at, at at any at any moment. So now I'm going to take you back to uh, back to the screen here where we can see that this is my RSI up here. Um, you guys are all probably pretty familiar with that. And uh, let me clean this up again. So. Um, before I go any further, let me just check really quick and see if we have any questions. Um, I see we got a few people in here, and uh, I thank you guys for for joining us. Um, and we're going to continue uh, through this, and uh, now climb into fire charts and see what we can see there. See if we see any confluence between what we saw in um, these moving averages. And I'm just going to put the 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 twenty the two hundred day back up, um, because that's that's the one that's really in play for me at this point. Two hundred day is at like what uh, forty eight, just over forty eight k at the moment, um, and our TA shows us that we have um, some prior levels around 
you know, right here, this range is, is just shy of, um, 40, you know, we, we, we broke out from like 39, five, uh, several months ago. So in this, in this, say 39 to, to 41 range that we're in right now, um, I will say that we've had a tendency to overshoot a lot of these things to maybe try and squeeze, um, some leverage traders. So, uh, I'm always anticipating that, but, uh, we see, uh, volume was increasing on these, on these sales, but we never really got what we didn't have was great volume on, uh, this move up. Right. So that's always something that, that I watch as well to see what kind of volume we have coming into play when we're hitting, we're hitting all time high. Look, we're hitting all time highs, but volume was declining here. So that's always something to consider. Now, um, let's, let's climb into fire charts and see what, see what that looks like. Let me just get a, um, refresh here. And I like to start out on a longer term, on a longer term chart. Um, if you're new to fire charts, this is our heat map. This is our version two, by the way, which is, is, uh, coming out pretty soon. We have, um, uh, you know, a full community, uh, using these charts, our 1.0 version, uh, only has one day of order book history, whereas our, um, our new 2.0 version, which is still in beta and our premium subscribers have access to this one right now and the entire, uh, MI dashboard, by the way. Um, so this will be coming out, but if you wanted access to this now, it's, it's, it's premium only, uh, VIP only, I should say. Um, so this is a really cool feature right here. This volume percentile slider up top here, uh, allows us to adjust the volume percentile so we can, we can see moves a little bit better. I don't like to push it too high, too far rather, because I want to see, um, the nuances in the chart, but note, and a lot of people overlook this. You can also slide from the bottom and filter out the lower, um, liquidity and really just isolate what is significant in the book. So. I, I think that's really cool. Um, and by doing so, you can see uh, we're stacked here with about uh, 38 million in the 40,000 range. Um, we've got another uh, 30 million just over that. And we have about 21 million of resistance uh, right above us at uh, 43,000. Um, I'm going to pull this back down so I can, I can see those nuances that, that we talked about. Um, so let's go to a year and, and get a better feel, right? This was, um, this is kind of like giving us a, a highlight of, of, of really where the bottoms and the tops were. And I'm going to go, actually, we don't have three years of order book data on, on, uh, at this resolution on, uh, Bitcoin yet, but we do, we are aggregating that we have over a year, we have what, uh, about 13 months. And we have uh, on alts, we do have three years for alts that have been around for that long. So the first thing I want to do is enlarge this. And you could you can do that by doing this, but that's a little cumbersome. What I like to do instead, it's much faster and easier, is just grab this zoom magnifier, highlight the area I want to expand, and fill the chart. Boom. Okay. So this was the breakout from 20K right, right here on the far left side. You can see we had, you know a hundred million dollars worth of resistance right there. Um, and we mark the tops really with liquidity, uh, just as we mark the bottoms with liquidity. Okay. Um, you can see on the tag tool, you can see just by hovering over these areas, what is happening here. Now let's scroll down a little bit and look at this, this binned CVD as well. Uh, and see if we can make sense of, of what actually happened. Um, on the CVD, you can see uh, this has been uh, brown is mega whales, a uh, million to $10 million orders. Purple is whales, 100,000 to $1 million orders. And through the history of Bitcoin, at least since we've been, we've been tracking it, uh, the, the purple whales have really dominated the price action the most. Uh, and we can, you know, these yellow ones, we've, we, we kind of feel like those are, you know, sure there's retail in there, but it's probably mostly dominated by bots and it often, uh, counter trades, um, the trend. Um, 
blue is the the cumulative the the total cbd and you can see it's it's really been declining through through the year certainly through this this area of of distribution so uh, let me click out some of the other noise here and make it easier to determine just what just what um the whales and mega whales have been doing um both were accumulating um both were accumulating um, early on off the breakout from, from 20K. And um, the purple whales, as you can see, started to distribute. They started to distribute here. They bought the dip. And then we started peaking. So this was really the, the beginning of the distribution phase here at, at 57K. They dipped. They bought the dip. And, and these could have been exit pumps at this point, right? Um, distributed, dipped, exit pump, dipped, exit pump, and it dumped from here. Now, the brown whales um, bought the whole way, bought all the way through the top. So you're saying, why would the brown ones buy the whole way and the purple ones be selling? Well, one thing you need to understand is that uh, brown whales, mega whales being the largest class, can disguise themselves as any other class, right? Uh, a, a, a retail trader can't disguise themselves as a whale. You know, we don't have the capital to do that. Uh, however, um, brown could disguise themselves as purple, so they could be brying brown to, to try and signal to bots and to, to other traders that, hey, the big boys are, are buying. But they can also, um, whether it's simply through split TPs or um, just as a, as a means of hiding what they're doing, um, be selling through smaller classes, whether it's purple or red or green or whatever, they can be distributing through, through, smaller, through smaller orders. Uh, and, they, and they certainly did. So ever since this phase, ever since this real distribution phase, um, the purple class has, has really been uh, heavy in selling and uh, uh, it's my opinion, um, and this is a bit speculative because there's no way to prove it 100. percent That um, that a lot of this selling down here. Let me turn off this tool so it's easier to see. It's been my opinion that that many of this, much of this selling down here of purple, has been um, these brown whales offloading as well. Okay, so that's just a, a possibility. <coughs> Pardon me, Willie. Wet my whistle. Uh, so um, this gives you an idea of, of what's here. Now, what's important right now, right? Let's look at the right here and now. Uh, this is support. Let me turn the tag tool back on. Um, but first, before I do that, notice these ranges, these really hard, clean edges of, of, of starts and stops. Um, when we see that, that's an indication that it's th that it's one entity, one actor making this move, right? So you can see uh, a, a clear line of orders faded um, from from this range at uh, mid 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 upper forties uh, all the way down, and now you can see here where they pulled those orders and shifted and consolidated in this range right here. So now let's turn on the tag tool and see exactly what's here. We are uh, currently trading at um, just under 42, and that was a bounce. Uh, also, by the way, um, as we were in the in the low 41 range, uh, just really probably an hour ago. Um, so we can expand on this even more if we want to make it easier to 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 see what's what's here. And I'm going to zoom right in on this area. Okay, so we have just below us about 40 million, 40, 40.67 million. Just below that, another 54 million, 54 and a half, another 40, another 17. I mean, there's, you know, there's significant support here. And it's laddered all the way down to actually beyond 30 into the uh, sub 30 levels here. Um, in my opinion, if they really thought we were going here, uh, there would be, um, you know, liquidity equals conviction, right? So this is where they think it is in the here and now today. Um, this could change in the days or weeks to come, but that's where we sit right now. And that's, you know, 
likely why we've we've bounced at this point. So now I want to zoom in uh, a little bit and see if we can get a better sense of what's what's going on here. All right, you can see it on the monthly. You can see it on the weekly. And now let's let's go micro to the daily chart. All right, and you can see uh, it looks like orders have been pulled. Right, this is this is it's it's very clear. This is one actor that has pulled these orders right here. Now, did they did they market buy, or did they just pull the orders? Um, my assumption is, and, and I, I really like to go with data more than assumptions. They, st um, the mega whales look like they have, um, started buying this range up here. Now, why would they buy here when there's so much liquidity down here? Well, there was this, um, this bit of liquidity here, uh, holding and it's, it's scaled here, right? So even without the tag tool, you can get an idea that that yellow is, you know, around, 8 million. Um, but when you, when you see this happening and there's resistance overhead, uh, these guys are buying the liquidity without slippage, right? So they're dollar cost averaging a position most likely, and they're buying into that liquidity, um, with precision amounts to avoid slippage. Um, so they bought again, right? It dumped. They bought again. There's there's no way to tell for sure whether this is the same actor that bought here and bought here. If it was, this would be a you know a likely a dollar cost averaging move, right? Bought here, bought here, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see them buy all the way down here. Um, same thing when we get to this level right here, and let's see what is sitting overhead again. Um, when we get to this level here, there's seven and a half million in the yellow. Uh, at that point, um, I would not be surprised to see uh, whales tapping into that liquidity. Are we going to have enough? Are we going to get to 43? And if we clear 43, can we get here? Or if you look at the start and stop of this, and this is this is another thing to look at here. See how this one stopped and then suddenly all of this resistance shows up? These guys want to get filled down here. That's my that, that that's my take on it. Um, I think I think these guys are trying to get filled in this range, um, and so they're trying to suppress price and uh, get us to move back down into this range. This liquidity aims to get filled. That's the bottom line here. Is this liquidity aims to get filled? Um, you know, over the past couple of months, we've seen uh, them have to adjust up a lot more so than down, um, and this this could just be the correction where uh, they're going to get filled lower. So, you know, with 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 where with what we're looking at in the order book right now, there's still another 9 million down at 38k. Um again, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes we'll see the book overshoot. And so, um I mean, we'll see price action overshoot the technicals. Um so you got to prepare for that. Prepare for that downside. You got to prepare for either scenario, really. Um when when price action is 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 like this, so now I want to show you one other um, new tool that might help you um, make some decisions as you're trying to strategize. I'm going to take you over to the MI dashboard, and um, this is a brand new tool. It also has not yet been released to the public. Um, our uh, premium VIP subscribers have have access to this. They're beta testing it for us uh, at the moment. Um, and again, thank you and welcome to all of the new um, VIPs who joined us over the holidays. It's really been uh, amazing uh, to, to get this kind of support and really enjoying engaging with you all uh, in, in the community. Um, so this is an options flow chart. And whether you're an options trader or not, uh, this should be interesting to you because this data can give us some ideas of uh, what the smart money is doing. Um, this is kind of a compilation of, of calls and puts. Um, if you're not familiar with options, I, I encourage you to educate yourself on that. The very basics of this would be that um, 
calls uh, is is more bullish and puts are more bearish. Uh, and in this case, um, since we have a cumulative here, we're going to say that that um, puts equal negative calls, meaning the stuff above the the price line, um, price line being the blue line, black line being a VWAP. Um, this up here would be would be call selling um, or put buying. Either either of those are um, bearish. Uh, the red here. This is call buying at 50 and 53. Um, happy to see that there. Don't know if we if, if we get there before the end of this month. Um, and down low here, um, these are these are puts. This this light pink here. That's a call buy down low. Now we do have the ability to get more granular here and look at um, each type of option by expiry date and type. So this is uh, for today's expiry, actually. And we're looking at calls, and we can see that there were some calls here at, uh, at the 50 range and 52 range. And, well, those guys um, didn't do so well, right? They wanted to see price above that. That didn't happen. Let's look out further and see what the end of the month looks like. So this is all calls. This is call selling. Okay. So these guys had calls in place and they sold them. They sold calls at 70. They sold 65. They sold 60. They, they pretty much sold um, almost everything. We're, they're very low. So, so light calls, these, these would be call buys and, and just above neutral. So there's not a lot here um, from 30, 35, 40. Uh, and the range that we're in right now, obviously, also has been has been breached. Now, let's look at puts. This is puts for the month. Puts for the month have now been bought. Um, these guys are in the money. Okay, Th these were kind of neutral areas here, right? Fifty k. Uh, well, this is an end of the end of the month, so they're going to have to close at the end of the month. Let let's first look here. Okay, so this was call buying in uh for today's expiry and everybody from here down uh was in the money um we didn't we didn't tap 40k yet so so far these guys everybody below uh not yet in the money but let's look out towards the end of the month this is the this is the january 28th expiry uh and you can see heavy uh call buying in um the 35 to 40 to 45 range um so that's an indication not a guarantee but it's an indication that um we could be seeing more downside so even if we get a bounce today by the end of the month these guys um, have a feeling that we're going to revisit these lows. Uh, now, this could change. This could change on a dime. These guys could sell these calls tomorrow or even today uh, if we see a bounce. But this is just some additional information for you to be considering. Um, and this, of course, is available with so much other data in, uh, in the MI dashboard. Uh, let's do this. Let's shift gears and take a look at ETH. Um, ETH, I posted on Twitter yesterday that it had maintained the structure so far. It had lost the 200-day moving average. It had maintained the structure, but we had to be watching to see if that was indeed going to hold. Um, would it maintain the structure? If it didn't, it was going to retest some prior um, consolidation areas, and it did. You can see my box here. My, you know, It's kind of a large range, but it literally uh, wicked almost all the way through it. That goes down to three grand even, and what did we do so far today? We went to uh, 3195. Um, so, and if we lose this level, um, we have, you know, the next range to look down to is, um, looks like about 2800. So, um, same thing, same set of circumstances here with trend precognition, right? Uh, the daily uh, flashed us a uh, short signal. Um, from the top of the trend line um, and literally 
just about every time from the top of the trend line. Um, and let's see if we got any confluence with the, so look at this. So here's a long signal that came from, from a retest of prior support down here. There's a long signal here and there's confluence with the A1 long signal down here, this little green dot. So we had a nice uptick from that. Again, when you see these signals in confluence or even a long, super long signal like this, it doesn't mean the move's gonna be any bigger. It just means a higher probability of that move. And when the A1, uh, when the A1 and the A2 plus have confluence, that's when I have the most confidence in the move. Um, and it's one that I, I play regularly. So, you know, here we are, we lost the trend. I don't know what else you wanna know. Um, let's look at it on the weekly. Uh, again, similar to what we saw with Bitcoin, this has not um, printed yet. It won't print until after this uh, current weekly candle prints. But uh, let's look at the monthly. Monthly, um, oop, didn't mean to take it off the screen. Monthly also printed after we closed that December candle. The monthly also printed uh, a short signal. And that one is, as they say, already printed and in the books. Now, what's interesting here, I'm going to take it back down to a daily chart. What's, what's interesting here, and we'll look at the fire charts here in a second. What's interesting here is... Um, we know that a lot of coins have similar structures, at least alts, right? Um, and so I've been tracking a couple others, um, BNB for one, which also was running in this channel and up until today, maintained the structure today, it broke the channel. So expecting more downside here because it hasn't reclaimed that channel yet either. Um, Solana is another one. Now these structures were a little different, obviously. Actually, I probably could have drawn the same channel down this way. I'm a little bit more macro here, but same, same set of circumstances. I could draw a channel, uh, right there and see, um, see the same thing. I'm sure. In fact, I will clean up and that's Hide that and hide that and add a channel here and see if it looks see if it looks the same. Yeah, so we broke through the structure again. Same same set of circumstances here. Um, Solana. Solana has, uh, for the moment, maintained that structure, but it's in a similar structure. And it also um, has almost touched that prior area of support, right? So that's another one to watch. You know, bottom line is in a, in, in a market, condition like we're in right now, um, this may not, and this is not financial advice, but um, just just my own opinion, um, this may not be a great uh, just blind buy the dip opportunity. Might be better, instead of BTFD, might be better to BTFB, buy the friggin' bounce, okay? Wait till you have confirmations that, that we're going to see a move here. And how do you get those confirmations? Well, we can use these tools. Obviously, trend precognition is a big help. It's a big indicator for things like that, uh, as are fire charts. So let's look at some of these things. First, let's go to ETH because that's where we started. Um, and uh, by the way, fire charts currently supporting all BTC and USDT coin pairs on Binance. We are uh, expanding uh, to other exchanges, but we've got to make some uh, changes to the infrastructure to do that. And that stuff is being architected uh, as we speak. Um, ETH, USDT. So let's go to a little, let's go to a three year and see what we have here. Now, the uh, the, the BTC book is the deepest. Um, so it takes a few seconds to load it for the first time. Once it's loaded, uh, once you load a chart for the first time, uh, everybody in the network um, will have it much faster. So 
It's trying to now load three years of data, so that takes a few seconds. Um, but we're going to get a snapshot of what's there. You see right now, most significant support is in that three thousand dollar range. So you know this looks this looks difficult to to gain anything from. Trust me, it's not. I'm going to show you how we 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 use this data. Um, even though the even though this book isn't as deep, um, we're basically looking at. Uh, the 5,000 orders nearest price action. And I'm just going to go to about here. Um, all right. So we can see, we can see obviously the most support. There's about 20 million here in the, in the 3,000 range. Um, but let's use the CVD to our advantage and see if we can understand what's happening. Obviously distribution happened here. Um, got the bounce, um, distribution there. And, um, now we have what seems to be, uh, mega whales still buying, uh, at least on the macro view, uh, near all time highs and distribution happening in other phases. This is, this is bots here at this point. Um, Let's zoom into this a little bit more. Actually, first, let me uh, bring in some of these other classes and see if that changes the tune. All right, so overall CVD is down. Um, looks like mega whales and these bots uh, have been in accumulation mode for the most part. So let's now zoom into this a little bit. And... Um, take this down to daily. Okay. So we're right here in a range that is, um, been resistance at, uh, 3,200, um, prices right here up on this right now, as we speak at 3,199, it looks like. So you can see, um, confluence with what we just said that mega whales were accumulating in this range and they're buying right now, trying to buy through this. Um, if they buy through this, does that mean that ETH is going to moon now? Uh, I'd be real surprised, um, but look, we also have other classes that are buying, and this is this is probably um, largely, uh, you know, a mix of of retail in these in these two classes. Um, but there is buying there, and that's good to see. The support sits here at three thousand even, and there's eleven million in support sitting there with uh, with with some some front runner liquidity, uh, up here. Um, well guys, uh, with that, uh, my phone is blown up right here from my family. So that probably means it's something, uh, significant is going on that I need to, uh, give my attention to. I appreciate you giving me the time. Um, and again, I will be in a, um, in the telegram group here, sharing, uh, more ideas and more data with you. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to, join our community, I invite you to do so. If you can't write down this link right here, you, you can just copy it off of our Twitter feed. And uh, if you like the content, please do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. My name's Keith Allen. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, you can get more at materialindicators.com. <laughs>